Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another locomotive review. Today I'm going to be showing you this, it's the Stevenson's Rocket. And I showed this rocket a couple of years ago in a review, but there were one or two reasons why I wanted to redo this again today. Now, the first reason is I just don't think my original review was all that good, so uh, yeah, it's always nice to do those again. But secondly, because the rocket I showed in that first video really wasn't in all that good a condition. Uh, it had some of the pipework missing, some of the little uh, copper bits. Um, yeah, it wasn't great, and the motor was faulty as well, of course. So what I've done since that video a uh, couple of years ago is I bought, I think last year, another Stevenson's rocket, not a perfect one, but just one for spares and repairs. And I took off it, um, you know, bits of it, so the copper bits, the pipe work, and also parts of the motor, so that I would eventually have one near perfect Stevenson's rocket. And I would say this one is 99% perfect. So today I'm going to be unboxing this and showing it to you again, but this time in uh, pretty much perfect conditions. So I hope you're going to enjoy it. Uh, I'm going to get this reviewed and then we're going to have a nice triang running session with some other classic triang locos. So hopefully it should be good fun. But first of all, let's uh, put this down and uh, let's have a quick look at the box. And as you can see by it, this is the triang Hornby packaging, which basically dates it to about the late 1960s, perhaps the early 1970s. And if I show you the end of the box, you can see that this is our 346 Stevenson's rocket train, and it really doesn't give you any more information than that, not even on the back. Look, it's just, uh, it just says, what does it say here? Made in Great Britain, that's all I can make out. Uh, so yeah, let's get this out straight away then, and uh, let's have a look at her. The packaging really isn't that great, to be honest. Um, there we go. And one bonus that does come with mine is the, well, let me show you. You get these two little figures. You get the fireman, who looks a little bit tatty, and uh, the driver, who looks quite smart. And, uh, you know, these are very nicely painted. And uh, for the age, it really is lovely to see them painted like this. So, as a little bonus to this video, I might just uh, blue tack those onto the tender, and uh, we'll see how they look. But for now then, let's start getting this unpacked. We'll have a look at its coach uh, first. I do only have the one coach, but uh, you can get more if you want to and, uh, you know, run a nice rake of them. But, uh, yeah, there it is, as you can see. Very nice looking coach, actually. It says uh, Liverpool Experience Manchester. Uh, very nicely painted. Uh, it does have the plastic wheels, but uh, you could change those if you wanted to. So, yeah, I'll show you that a little bit more later on. And uh, now let's have a look at the tender for Rocket. And uh, as you can see, it's a very tiny little thing. I would say it's about the size of the Gandhi Dancer. So yeah, really, really impressively small, but also very nicely painted. More on that later. And now then, let's have a look at the rocket itself, or Stephen, as you might know it. And it's always a bit awkward to get this out, so bear with me, there we go. And uh, there it is, in much, much better condition now, Stevenson's rocket. And it is, in fact, motorised, so yes, there is a motor inside there. And mine actually does run really well now, which is a real bonus. So let me put the tender with it so you can see it, there we go. Yeah, I won't try and hold the coach as well because these are quite rare, they're a little bit sought after, so you want to be careful with them. But there it is, Stevenson's Rocket, and I'll review her in more detail in just a second. But first of all, here is a little bit of history on the rocket. So it was built in 1829 by Robert Stevenson and Company, and while it wasn't one of the very first locomotives, it was certainly one of the first locomotives to be deemed successful. It won the Rainhill Trials in 1829, which was a competition where different engines competed to be chosen to run the Liverpool and Manchester Railway. It formed the basis of all steam locomotives to follow, really, uh, with the Stevenson's valve gear, of course. And it is still around today in the London Science Museum, though it really doesn't resemble its old self. It's been modified so much since then. But instead, if you want to see one that looks like this model, you can see one at the National Railway Museum in York. And uh, that is a replica, but it does look the way uh, that Rocket used to when it was first built. So 
So there it is then, the Stevenson's rocket train, all assembled and with the crew as you can see, and I think that is a really nice touch, isn't it? So yeah, um, 1960s, what a lot of detail it has considering the age. Let's look at rocket first then. Of course, the most obvious detail is this beautiful metal chimney, which is metal, it's not just enamel painted into a metallic colour. No, it is actually metal, and as you can see, the crown on the top here is also separately fitted. And yeah, that looks absolutely fantastic. And then also separately fitted, wise you have this pipe here which actually helps to hold the chimney on and then you also have these separately fitted copper colour pieces uh, I suppose one of those is a dome isn't it maybe one of them's a safety valve or something like that I'm not 100% sure and then of course moulded detail wise you do have uh, this lovely uh, wood panelling effect uh, over the boiler there if it is wood uh, I, I suppose it shouldn't really be wood should it if it's uh, going to have fire around it but I suppose it's all carefully insulated if it is wood and of course you have the firebox here uh, which is uh, painted into a different colour and you can see just moulded on there you can see the door where the fireman would have to shovel the coal then of course you have the valves and pistons and whatnot on the side here which you can see are linked to the wheels and uh, of course they move when the locomotive runs but uh, yeah generally a very very nicely detailed model uh, you can see the rocket nameplate there it's basically intact it looks very good and then uh, the tender of course uh, very very unusual tender definitely the weirdest tender ever but uh, yeah this is how they looked so the barrel of water is literally that it would hold the water for the locomotive it's just stuck in a barrel there and uh, if you look in between the two crew members that I just put in you can see there's a little pile of coal on the floor which the uh, fireman would just shovel into the firebox but yeah a nicely detailed tender as you can see it's got the black paint around the axle boxes and it's got that wood panelling effect on the side which is very nice too the coach is also very very beautiful in that uh, black and yellow colour as you can see the lettering on the side is very nicely done uh, Liverpool Experience Manchester Railway Company uh, very very nice and you can even see look the door handles have been painted on too so uh, yeah a very nice looking coach no interior unfortunately but it's that small you really can't see inside when it's running by so uh, yes there it is Stevenson's rocket I suppose then it's about time I took it down onto the railway and got it running alongside some of the triangle coach so I hope you're going to enjoy that, I know I am. Uh, let's get to it. Okay then, so there is Stevenson's rocket looking absolutely brilliant down on the track and I'm going to run her in just a second but first I'll introduce you to the other locos that are going to be running today and it's a bit of a double header theme so as you can see just about to come out of this siding we have two of the S15, sorry M15 King Arthur class locos. The one at the front is Sir Dinadan and the one at the back is uh, painted into very plain wartime black and it doesn't have any visible running number or nameplate, it was a custom job. And anyway, as you're going to see when they come out, they have some Mournsel coaches, so uh, hopefully that will be nice. So here they come. I'm going to keep those going out of sight, and they'll be running again in a little while. And on the very inner line then, I'm going to be running another pair of double headers, and uh, these are two Flying Scotsman models. The one at the front is the original Triang Fox Flying Scotsman in the BR Green, which looks absolutely superb. Let me just stop the M15s. And then you have the slightly later Hornby LNER Green Flying Scotsman, as you can see just behind it. And together they're going to be pulling a very, very large rake of teaks, which should look lovely. But for now then, let me just wait for these to get out of the way, and we'll get good old Stevenson's rocket tested at slow speeds for you. And as I was telling you earlier, since the last time I reviewed this, uh, it's had a new motor spring, new brushes, and in fact just a few days ago I serviced it as well because it was uh, time for it to be serviced. Anyway then, let's get her tested. Uh, I don't know which direction she's set to go in, so I'm just going to change it and uh, maybe she'll go backwards. In fact, backwards would be better, wouldn't it? Because she'll be leaving the shot otherwise. So, gently then. As you can see, she seems to have stalled. <laughs> Hang on. Come on. As you can probably imagine, she's a bit happier at going at higher speeds than she is slower speeds. But there we go, as you can see, uh, she does run okay and uh, she does actually run perfectly at those higher speeds. But the thing is, they're really not designed um, to run well. I think they're just, it's a, a miracle that they do run at all, to be honest. But uh, there we go, that's a little bit better, isn't it? Until it stopped. You know what, didn't have to touch it. Let me give it a little bit more. There we are. <laughs> right, let's do it once more then. Back she comes. 
as you can see it's not too bad is it and of course it has got a load so it might have been a bit smoother without the the coach but uh, anyway let me speed her up and uh, let's have a running session then and while we wait for her here I'll just remind you to keep your eye out for some other double heading locomotives which are hidden on the railway and as you can see she's only set her to a quite a low speed on the controller but she uh, she really does fly around she definitely is a rocket isn't she and there goes those two flying Scotsmans double heading of course don't know why I decided to do double headers, no particular reason, I just thought it would be nice to do. There goes Rocket. Very difficult to film at such a speed, but I suppose I might slow her down in a second. Um, there goes the Flying Scotsman's. Don't know what the plural of Flying Scotsman is. I think Flying Scotsman's is acceptable. <laughs> it doesn't sound quite right though. And what about the S... Why do I keep saying S15? They're definitely N15s. Although the S15s are similar, I suppose. But I think these were bigger, weren't they? Possibly, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, I've slowed old Rocket down a little bit. And that seems to have done the trick, I reckon. Obviously, in real life, she was quite slow, despite this model. <laughs> I think she only managed, I don't know if she managed 30 miles an hour even, probably nowhere near. There go the Scotsman's and Rocket is just struggling over these points, but she's managed it. And as you can tell it is very slightly uphill here, so she does slow down quite noticeably, but not too badly. And now for my ratings then on the Stevenson's Rocket. Detail, 7 out of 10. It really isn't too bad, um, especially for the age. So, uh, yeah, not a bad score there. Performance, 6 out of 10. As you can see, she's not too happy at slowed speeds because she really doesn't have uh, massive pickup capabilities. But still quite a good performer at those higher speeds. So, uh, 6 out of 10. Character, 10 out of 10. I mean, have you ever seen anything quite like this? It's just brilliant. And uh, similarly, the build quality isn't too bad at all. The motor is a little bit small and flimsy which means it is a bit fragile, but uh, apart from that, it is pretty good. So value then, um, you can't really get these below £100 in good condition, which is very, very expensive. So they're definitely more of a collector's item than a toy, but uh, I consider that to be pretty bad value for money, so 6 out of 10. Overall then, 7.55 out of 10, not a bad score at all, which puts her, let's see, 30 in the ranking, just above the Brill Trolley and just below Gordon. Okay, I'm just going to stop Rocket just here then. I'll just make sure she's in the shot. Yes, she is, because as you can see, I printed off this Stephen face from Thomas and Friends. So uh, just for you Thomas fans out there, you can never say I don't think of you, I'm going to stick this on very briefly and uh, let him have a quick run uh, with a Stephen face. It isn't quite right, of course, because the, uh, the Stephen in Thomas and Friends uh, looks quite a bit different to this. But uh, there it is. Let me show you that up close. <laughs> it does look a bit daft, doesn't it? But uh, yeah, everybody loves Stephen. So uh, yeah, I think we'll get him started then, shall we? Uh, we'll wait for these other engines to clear out the way. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Blimey, that's a lot of teaks. Okay, here we go then. Here is, just for a few minutes, Stephen. Well, here comes Stephen anyway looking lovely. I seem to remember watching an episode with Stephen in it where he, did he save Gordon from some bridge collapsing? I forget really. Whoa. Steady on Stephen. Just let those N15s go by. I nearly said S15 again. I really don't know why. I think something's telling me I need to run that engine again. made something slightly creepy haven't I put in a face on it but uh, yeah it should be interesting anyway I know it's not very accurate and <laughs> it's not a very good face either but uh, oh well never mind Ooh. just behind the crane you can see the flying Scotsman's going past 
quite a strange view of them, isn't it? <laughs> All right, folks. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing Stephen today. Uh, I certainly did. And if you did enjoy the video, please feel free to leave it a like or even a comment. Oop, come on, Stephen. Steady on. Uh, because I do love it when you guys get in touch. And the likes really are more important than ever at the moment, of course, with these YouTube problems. But as I said last time, I am fighting through them, so uh, don't worry about the channel or anything like that. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching. Uh, here's a quick update on the Wall of Fame. I think it's just about up to date at the time of filming, but it won't be by the time this goes out. But if you do want to send your pictures or drawings in, please feel free to. Uh, you can send uh, pictures of them to samstrains at outlook.com. But please make sure they're not copyrighted images. You have to have taken them yourself because, uh, yeah, I get a bit worried when I get uh, copyrighted stuff in. But uh, other than that, once again, please feel free to check out the Facebook or Twitter pages, which are at facebook.com forward slash samstrains or twitter.com forward slash samstrains. But for now, folks, that is it. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all very soon. Cheers, everybody.